On the show today, we talk to Mickey Strong and discuss her work with empowering women in business. And as always, we interpret the dreams you sent in during the week. Welcome to So You Think You're Awake, the show about dreams and their meanings. I'm Michael Sheridan and with me in studio is Heidi Brook. Hello. Our resident medium and Susan Pullen, our shamanic healer and life coach. Hello. Uh, thanks to everyone who sent dreams to radio show at dream-analysis.com. Please continue to send them in as we always need them for the show. Uh, I mean that, don't hold back. If you've got a dream that's bugging you, we want it. You can always jump the queue and call us on 425-373-5527 and we will analyse your dream, connect with your guides for advice or provide life coaching advice. Um, so, uh, I said earlier we'll be talking to Vicky Strong, we'll be talking to her after the break, but right now we're going to have a look at some of your dreams. And the first dream comes from um, a friend of the show, actually. She did the my dream course many years ago and she analysed a dream for somebody, for a friend of hers, and uh, sent it in for a health check and that's appropriate because this guy actually was in hospital with a problem. See if you can spot the cause or solution in this dream. He says, I was at a specialty store with lots of stuff and I was shopping around and getting stuff. I bought a box of donuts and some Asian spices that I couldn't find anywhere else. Okay, so straight away we see the problem, the health problem this person has is uh, with their colon. So a digest- elimination system slash digestive system problem. And straight away we see it in a, the dream taking place in a store buying food. So the foods that we're likely to see in a dream like this are foods that the dreamer's been told to cut down. And straight away he's been told to cut down because of the box of donuts. The donuts, we have had this pun on the dream on the show before, is about do not do something. So what we have, any food that's named in this dream after the donuts is food that should be eliminated. And the Asian spices is the first. Also the specialty store. Also, for some reason, I had purchased some meat at this place long before I got sick, but I had kept the meat at this fridge in the store itself. It had spoiled, of course, because it had been so long, but I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it, so I left it in the fridge. Okay, now, this is how dreams show you what your body can't eliminate. Even in this dream, he's saying he can't eliminate, he doesn't know what to do to get rid of the meat. Clearly, you just take it out of the fridge and throw it in the garbage. But he doesn't know how to do that in the dream, which symbolizes the fact that his his elimination system is currently unable to process and eliminate meat. Uh, And a lot of the time we'll find that the foods that cause us problems are foods that um, our body can't eliminate rather than... And and that's the big problem, that we can't get rid of it quick enough because with a a healthy functioning elimination system, food that's a problem for us won't stay in our body long enough for us to to cause any problem to us. Uh, But in this case, it's going to be cut down the red meat it's staying in your body far too long it's the one that's really singled out in this dream so far and um, when you've done that for some time and it takes a while for the colon to heal but it does heal it has an incredibly rich blood supply um, then you'll find you'll be able to eat it again but for now it's something you've got to cut out still I bought way more than I could carry but I felt like that didn't matter much I would figure it out I was pushing around this cart and drinking coffee from a big mug at the same time It was a precarious situation, but it worked just fine. Okay, but it doesn't work just fine. So also got to cut down coffee, I'm afraid. So we have the specialty store. So the very first question I asked, because of the type of foods we're seeing here, is does this person treat himself to spicy and and, uh, foods that where he considers like these are really a nice indulgence that he treats himself to? And uh, the answer is, of course, yes. Uh, Not surprisingly, yes, I mean. And... uh, so that's what he's got to stop. He's got to, the, his dream is asking him to eat much more bland foods uh, and cut these particular things out. Now, interestingly, he says here, um, what, what are his exact words? Uh, it had been so long, but I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it, so I left it in the fridge. That's okay. We did that. Still, I bought way more than I could really carry her, but I felt like that didn't matter much. So this dreamer needs a jolt uh, to wake him up to say, look, it does matter. You think it doesn't, but it does. So it's really important now he's already got this message and I have permission to use the dream. But um, that's a that's one of the things we quite often find that people, when they've got an issue, are the last people to realize um, to take action because they say, well, you know, it couldn't be this that I'm doing that is causing my problem. Uh, And and that's the worst type of person to try to get through to because uh, you've got to get past that before you can even begin talking about the 
the issue. Continues, then I met some older ladies that I know, and I stayed in the store and chatted at some tables there. We chatted for a long time, and the store started shutting its lights off for us to leave. The ladies left, and then I went to pay, half expecting a friend of mine to be working there. He wasn't, but the cashier was nice enough. He complained about having to do work that he didn't normally have to do because they didn't have a senior supervisor, and I said, oh yes, my friend doesn't work here anymore. I can't really remember the foods I bought except this big box of donuts, and there must have been spices and soups and other specialty food items. I definitely didn't buy any cheese or meat or fresh prepared soups, but I must have bought refrigerated items and maybe like Asian noodles or something. Maybe chicken or poultry too, I'm not sure. Okay, so he gives us a bit out of sequence, so this is why I'm not interrupting. I want you to read this next piece too. But here again, the emphasis is on the do not. Uh, The donuts are just so prominent in the dream. Uh, By the time I left, it was really dark in the store. Oh yeah, a blanket. I had brought a comforter and a blanket to the store for some reason. I don't remember being wrapped in it, but when it was time to leave, we folded the thing, the ladies and I. Also, these ladies and I talked a great deal about work about tenure and meetings and the other faculty members on my floor. And the dean of the faculty was there too, a boss of mine, just browsing in the store. I said hello to him and then found the ladies I knew. We were sort of half conscious that he could hear our work talk while he was in the store. This is all before I got up to pay. Okay, so we leave it at there and it goes, so remembering then the next piece was that they start turning out the lights. And uh, exactly how does he say uh, we chatted for a long time and the store started shutting its lights out, uh, lights off. So when you consider that this is a health warning dream saying this is what you need to cut out, when you see something like um, if you delay, it's going to be lights out for you, it's not a good thing at all in a dream. Now, dreams exaggerate, but they're trying to, they're trying to be punchy and, and say to this person, look, this is something you seriously need to do because it is such an important thing for you to do. It, would, it literally will take you off the planet. So you've, you've got to just completely change how you eat and no comfort eating. We have the, the blanket in there. But what is the psychological thing about it too? So we'll expect it to step back and say, and we do when the ladies get introduced, it'll step back and say what the issue is, wh- or where the issues are. So what do I need to change other than my diet? You need to deal with issues around your mom because we have these old ladies that show up in the dream uh, and that's key. And, and then you also need to... Um, Look at things that that you probably traits you probably copied from your mom. So, being happy to sit down and complain about doing work that you didn't used to have to do, like the like the cashier does in the dream, um, and check out is another another pun here. So it's lights out and you're going to check out. You know all this stuff, all the bad things are here in this dream. Um, so we have the um, talking about also talking about your boss and hoping he doesn't overhear. So change that that's a very easy thing to look at and say okay I'm going to change doing that I'm not going to do that why there's a, there's a few reasons one is holding on to issues um, and bringing them up over and over again rather than putting them in the past where they need to be it, doing that psychologically ca- causes your uh, elimination system to hold on to things as well that it should also eliminate so it'll speed up sounds crazy but it'll speed up your elimination system to do anything that the dream links together so um, eat in a positive frame of mind rather than a negative um, and because that charges the food in a positive way and makes you feel good about eating it in the first place. And, you know, it's something like saying grace is a really, really positive thing. You don't have to do it and hold hands with other people, but just mentally in your own head, um, you know, bless the food, whatever way works for you. It doesn't have to be religious at all, but uh, know that you're eating the food because you want it to be good for your body and putting yourself into that frame of mind before you start eating is really, really important. Uh, especially for you, but it'll it'll really speed up your uh, recovery, uh, and that's something you want to do. So deal with the issues with mom, um, and that will help you not hang on to things that that. Uh, and it could be you you could find that you're you're drawn into conversations that other people start, uh, and that's going to be harder to get out of. But realize that you need to do that. You need to step away from it and and find excuses or whatever you need to do to do it. And after you do it for a little while, especially if you're working on the issues with your mom. Um, you'll find that you don't need to put any effort into it at all anymore. It just becomes easier. So I really like that dream because it's very, it's very um, on the mark uh, for this particular person, even though he didn't want to hear he wants to continue to eat those types of foods. And, of course, the big problem is only now while he has, uh, he, like he's been di- diagnosed with diverticulitis. Um, 
but it's only now while he's got this serious condition deal with it now and it'll, it'll fix itself and you can possibly start eating some of these foods again so we have a look at another this one is called attending dream workshop I met a, I meet a woman and in casual conversation I learn that she has dream classes or workshops on Saturday mornings at 9.30 a.m. in her house on the same street that I live on this is so convenient for me I decide I'm going to go to her next workshop. Okay, so this one is uh, obvious. Well, it's from a listener. They all are. But uh, she, what's clear here is this person has a level of dream analysis that she's able to do herself because she says this person who teaches the classes is on the same street she lives on. And that gives us straight away. And street is also, uh, we've had it on the show many times, uh, often to do a career. So this person could actually teach uh, dream workshop classes herself. Um, and the Saturday morning, morning is always good in a dream because it tells you that this is something that wakes you up. This is something that brings awareness to you. And the 9.30 are, as, a, as numbers are good as well. Um, but let's just continue on, I suppose. Now it is Saturday morning and I'm trying to leave my house, but one thing leads to another. I want to bring my dreams with me and I have my booklets. I'm with uh, my partner, I'm guessing, um, and we both head to the woman's house, though now it's close to 10 a.m., I see two or three people still entering the house and think that this is good. Um, my partner and I will blend in with the latecomers and won't stand out as those who arrived at the last minute. So now we see one of the issues the dreamer has to work on, uh, not wanting to stand out. Uh, and <clears throat> it's funny how dreams can do it. So we, we see two things here. One is that she is kind of slow to do something with this, but the 10 tells, tells us that her guides are asking her, her higher self is asking her to finish this, you know, that she's she's got this to a certain level and it, and it's a really good thing. Ten is about completion. It's got the completion of the set of numbers. Um, but we'll see later on in the dream. It's not actually saying, look, you have to teach dream analysis, but to accept that you've got this skill set and use it. I mean, we know she does. Um, but use it uh, for yourself and, and know that it's going to bring you lots of information about things that you need to do. Um is there anything else in that part? No, let's continue. I Let's see. Well, her, her partner is with her. Do you want to say anything about that? Uh, that's okay. I, I can come back to that because he's mentioned later on. Okay. I enter the house to find myself in a huge tiered lecture hall, and I'm on the highest tier looking down. Okay, so there's our biggest clue. That was the part that told me this woman can do dream analysis herself because she, if you're looking at the classroom, imagine this classroom in your mind. So it's an auditorium with all the steps you enter and you go down to the to where the lecturer speaks and she's at the top level. Um, so that tells us that she's already achieved an advanced level in, in this field. The room reminds me of a college lecture hall. I look down and see someone is giving a talk. I'm able to get a seat, but there are many people on my level and in front of me, and so to see better, I sit on my folder of dreams, which gives me a couple extra inches. Then my partner wants his notes, which he thinks I'm sitting on. I give him the folder, and now I can see as well as when I was sitting on the on the dream notes. You have my dreams there, um, Ron, I say to him, and he gives, he realizes this and gives me back the folder, which I sit on again and am able to see as before. Okay, so this is the only thing about the partner in it, that uh, he had, um, when they got together, she sort of put her dream work aside for a little while and, and then picked it up. So when she's sitting on the folder of dreams, she can see better. So it's clearly saying, use this as your foundation. This really helps you in your life. Um, and, uh, and and that's that's fine. That's I mean, is there anything else in there that we want to talk about? Uh, lots of people in front. So she has difficulty with seeing. So, OK, th we see this come up again. She's talking about people on her level. Um, so w you'd have to ask, do you cons is it that you think your ability with dreams is less than what it actually is? I mean, where do you see yourself? Where do you place yourself with this ability? And I know in her case, because I spoke to her after uh, analyzing this, that um, she had actually thought at one point that she would teach classes, but held back on it. All right, but it, it didn't really take off the way she wanted it to take off. And that's the same, though, with any field. You know, it quite often will take effort. But she gets a bit of direction here in, in the next piece of the dream. I'm taking everything in and see many recognizable people in the dream field who are doing research that's familiar to all. 
Then I learned that this was a special presentation. The experiment of the featured dream researcher has to do with a man in a lucid dream state who was able to communicate with the outside world when prompted by saying one word, the, or he pressed a the button. Okay, maybe I should have crossed out this paragraph because it's kind of a boring one. But it, it, and there's more to it, so I, I we'll skip to the next paragraph. But this one is really just, it's about um, other people getting recognition for doing very inconsequential work in the field of dreams. And she's looking at that and going, what is going on here? And that's understandable. Um, but it's also saying, look, if, if you're thinking that there is something in this because there are, these are people of note, um, then there is, you know, that, that there is like there's definitely something in here because it's the definite article. So we'll just read the last, the next paragraph and then we'll leave this dream at that. After the talk, the dream researchers gather in a back room which is on the highest level of the hall and reminds me of a projection room in a movie theater. I'm curious and I want to go into the room and I can only open the door a crack and no further and can only faintly make out the dream notables standing about engaged in deep discussions. The room is off limits for regular people. In arriving at the lecture after it started, I feel that I did not miss out on anything. Okay, so we see here then, she's, she has opened the dream world. She's, op- like she's put, in so, put so much effort into it over many years. She's been in this for a long time. And uh, she's not, you know, a lot of people will keep dream journals and do things. She's gone a, lots of steps beyond doing, doing that. And um, so this dream is saying, look, you're at their level, but this isn't the field you're to get into. So use it because you've got a skill set with it. It's going to elevate you just like sitting on the folder elevates you. Um, but it's not going to be your career. Uh, and, and so that's really good to see in the dream. It's not that you wouldn't necessarily use this and other things you're going to do, but it's not going to be the final thing that you do that where people say, oh, yes, this is X. She's a dream analyst. So we, um, we'll, we'll do one really short one and then we'll take a break. In my red car, my mother was driving. I was in the passenger seat. She handed me a distinctly white envelope with my name written on the front center. I opened the envelope and counted $260, all in $20 bills. I double-checked to make sure it was 260 and not 250 To my delight, it was indeed 260 Isn't it funny, you know, would you really care much over $10? But in the dream, it's important that it's not the, it's not the five. So this dream is about channeling because we have the envelope and we have all the twos. And we see this over and over again, especially stacks of twos, uh, like the stack of 20 bills that is in this. So this dreamer is cutting the ties with her mom, and it's saying that it's almost, it's saying that her channeling ability is going to improve because she's getting energy back that her mom took away, and that's what the money symbolizes. Money in dreams is is frequently going to be about energy and heart energy because it's green Um, and and other things. But uh, so here, the question in the dreamer's mind is, is it going to get me off the off the karmic path and it is it's going to get you onto the dharmic path which is what the six symbolizes and that's a goal uh, that this dreamer has in mind so really good dream very short dream and we tend to see short dreams when you're cutting the ties or doing any type of therapy that's working the dreams after a while start getting very short because you've instructed your inner world uh, inner mind to say okay we're going to do this we're going to take this take the bull by the horns and we're going to achieve this in this lifetime And then it starts showing up in the dreams. So we're going to take a a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Mickey Strong. Hello, this is Heidi. How can I help you? You tell me. You're the psychic. That's not how it works. I am a medium. I connect to your spirit guides and loved ones and pass on their messages to you. So why did I call? Use the force, Heidi. Look, I can get... Answers to any questions you ask. That's not a problem. They can be about anything. Relationships, career, children, finances, anything. Anything? Okay. What's my favorite color? Dave, your mom says you're being childish. For readings with Heidi, go to angelsontheline.com. I'm Susan Pullen with True Radiance Healing Arts. When you remove the old beliefs that keep you living the same patterns over and over in your career, relationships, or health, then your life begins to flow. It's as though you're in a boat, and in place of the waves that used to upset or rock your boat, you now have smooth, open water with the current carrying you where you want to go. 
It is my great pleasure to work with your guides and angels to teach you to clear old beliefs and conditioning, including cutting the ties, so you can have greater freedom and ease in your life. Work with me in person or over the phone. Call me today at 206-818-4680 or find me on the web at true-radiance.com. The new mainstream of talk radio. Alternative Talk, 1150 AM. Welcome back to So You Think You're Awake. Uh, I'm Michael Sheridan. With me in studio is Heidi Brook and Susan Pullen. And we've got Mickey Strong on the line. Hello to you, Mickey. Hello, Michael. You're so fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never heard that before. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I met you, or I should say you met me uh, about six years ago. Um, you did a Purpose for Profits Telesummit for Women and uh, included me as a guest speaker on that. And uh, <laughs> your silence. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was listening. Yes, I, so, uh, it, it had quite an impact on me. So um, you got in touch with me recently. And in fact, I got interviewed on your podcast series, uh, which we can talk about in a bit. But you describe yourself as empowering women in business, um, or I've described you as that. Do you want to correct the record and tell us exactly what you do? <laughs> well, that is what I do, empowering women in business. Here's what's really important to me, Michael, helping women grow their business in a way that's in alignment with who they are. So really taking out the piece of competition or feeling the need to compete, just building something that is uniquely them, building their business around their strengths and talents and their gifts, and then creating strategies to become successful, okay. because I think you need both. You, you say there's three pieces needed, distinction, um, alignment, and strategy. Yes. So, um, mm. Could you, could you describe a little bit about those? Like, I think the distinction is probably clear enough if you have something that you um, that is uniquely you. But, I, I, you know, people can quite often lose that thinking that they need to to blend in and, and offer something similar to what somebody else does. Absolutely. And that's that's why so many businesses are in this place of competition and why they don't feel like they're getting noticed or they're standing out is because they're trying to emulate someone else to fit in to not stand out because it is a little bit scary Michael being ourselves you know we we have judgments about will people people like us if we are being ourselves or if we state our point of view and the fact is when we are being ourselves it's what we do so very naturally and we have very distinct gifts and talents that make up part of who we are and how we operate in business that when we do that we actually start attracting the right kinds of people into our business and competition just becomes something that we don't even think about it just becomes how can I deepen the work that I'm already doing how can I become even better at what I'm doing and serving the people that I'm meant to serve wow so yeah distinction is pretty important alignment is is really the second piece of that when you know who you are and you're really grounded in what you bring to the marketplace what you bring to your community it's it's not just who you are it's how you do it and that's what alignment really is about it's about building and designing your business around your natural way of showing up in business so for instance if you're a coach um, many coaches love the one-to-one -one work, but there are other coaches that they do not thrive in that environment. They don't do their best work in that environment. So building their business model around one that is one-to-many, so group programs or doing work live workshops, is much better for them and more profitable than just doing one-to-one -one work. So you really being mindful of about how you do your best work and designing it in a way that you're delivering your expertise to your marketplace in yeah. a way that they respond to very well. Well, see, those two make sense to me. And so I imagine they make sense to a lot of people because <laughs> um, I, I don't consider myself above average in terms of these things. But where um, where you say the third one is strategy, I think that's where most people are going to have difficulty. Yes, um, it is actually. And, and I find that very curious because it's one of my areas of strengths. And, and that's just the case. A lot of women and, and men that get into business, this may not be their, their strong point or one of their natural strengths. It's really about creating not only your uh, marketing strategy, which is a very big part of growing your business. You actually have to market it. It's not like you build it and they will come. <laughs> they will, but you have to let them know where you are. And that's what marketing is all about, is letting people know where you are 
and how you can help them. So the strategy um, piece is very important in not only how do you reach those people, because there are so many ways to market your business, but it doesn't mean that you should try to do them all. There are very specific ones that, again, are very tailored to your natural way of showing up in business that can be very effective when you just focus on the strategies that are right for you and right for your marketplace. And and again, it makes sense. And is this something you help? This is how you help people working on all three um, of these things at the same time? Um, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's more of a progression, Michael. It's, it's really first about defining your distinction. Some people come to me, they already know what that is, and they just want to design or redesign their business. And then, you know, plug in the strategy that goes along with it. And some of them, you know, they have the business model, but they don't know (laughs) what makes them distinctive and they don't have a strategy that's working for them. So it's not simultaneous. It's these three pieces fit together. And this is what I found that it's it's just these three pieces that we need to be successful. And we don't need to overcomplicate things. Well, you're making it sound simple. And <laughs> <laughs> it is actually <laughs> uh, for, for you. <laughs> simple doesn't mean easy, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's a huge start. You've been doing this for 25 years. That's a really long time. Uh, why do you do it? And what switched you on to it? Uh, well, I think I was born an entrepreneur. I had a, my parents were self-employed, so I had really good role models. And in fact, everyone in my family, except for one of my siblings, has their own business, and both uh, my children do. So it, it seems to be to in that. our genes somewhat. <laughs> um, but I was always drawn to not working for somebody else, and I think that was my main motivation, because I didn't like being told what to do or how to do it. And I've always had a standard of excellence in everything that I do, whether that is cleaning the house or working with clients, you know, at this at this point in my life. But I think that was part of my upbringing as well is whatever you do, do it well, do it very well. So it's it's more of a work ethic. So I I was really drawn to to that. And uh, this is my fourth business, Michael. I I, I find it interesting when you're saying I was drawn to work for myself. I'm thinking in the back of my mind, she was fired. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I actually was fired from my first job <laughs> for, for speaking up. Yes, I was fired from my first you, job. <laughs> and and uh, that's an interesting thing because quite often what we consider at the time to be a huge setback is the very thing that we need to happen in our lives for us to realize uh, our own strengths and actually put us on the right path. Mm-hmm. So it's how you react uh, to an event. But uh, you were born in Germany, lived in Canada, and now you live in Washington. How long have you been living in Washington? Oh, 19 and a half years. Okay. And yeah. I'm an American citizen. Yeah. Does, yeah. That, does having been in all those places give you extra insights uh, with your cause? And I think I, with you, it's right to call it a cause. Mm, I do. I like to call it a cause. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it does in, in some ways in that we're, we're all the same doesn't matter what what country that we're born in or where we live we all have the same basic human needs we're all drawn to answering the question for ourselves what's my purpose and then when it comes to business how do I you know live my purpose through my business and make it profitable because that's what we want when we get into business and I don't think that changes in the different cultures that we're in Um, it does however change how we market ourselves Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the language <clears throat> we use. Mm-hmm. But of course, if marketing is, is the big uh, obstacle to a lot of people um, and that's the piece that changes. <laughs> it's, uh, well, it does. But the great thing about that, Michael, is um, marketing is marketing and, and it's a skill that can be learned. It's not difficult. It, it's just a new skill. And like any new skill that you learn, it's more difficult in the beginning and then it becomes something that's okay, very I'm natural. I'm thinking of gender reassignment and signing up. Um, because you're making it sound so simple. <laughs> <laughs> Again, simple, not necessarily easy, right? <laughs> but that yeah, but I like if somebody says, hard. look, I'll hold the nail, just hit the hammer, hit it here. Right. I find that's okay. It's still exerting, but <laughs> at least I know I'm hitting a nail. <laughs> right. And not your own finger. If yeah. You yeah. I keep hitting my finger. <laughs> so, um, okay, people never ask this one. What are the advantages of being a woman in business? And that's not a trick question. I hope there is an answer. 
Well, I can only answer from the perspective of being a woman yeah. because I am one. Um, women have tremendous untapped power. That's first of all. And we, we tend to shy away from it because we think power is somehow bad because we've usually associated it with very strong, aggressive energy. And that's just not true. I think why it's great to be a woman in business is that we have almost, it's almost like it's part of our genes where we have this connection gene where we want to connect with people. We want to help people. We're so drawn to that. So when we really take what's special about us and if we feel the call to entrepreneurship we take what is the best of us and and create um, financial sustainability financial independence that that's one of our ways of tapping into our own power and that may sound you know like it, it's an overused word like tapping into your power or feminine power it really is true yeah, we I, have the ability to change and shift the world I uh, I don't think it's overused. I think people who use it misuse it, um, and they're not talking about female power because people will quite often think about like some Margaret Thatcher or other like the female presidential candidate on the Republican side. They they're male energy counterparts, uh, really the same as as the other men in the race. There, um, female energy is a completely different thing. It and, absolutely and, is, and mm-hmm. and we're moving into a female energy age, and we can see some of the changes that's forging. Like patriarchal institutions are collapsing like the bank manager and the priest who were revered are now both have fallen from their pedestals. And in fact, the female energy has removed the pedestal. Now individuals accept more responsibility for their life and their life purpose. And it's no longer a common purpose. And, you know, there are people uh, kicking and screaming, uh, wanting to hold on to the old ways, but it's a futile exercise. Where's my question in this? The question is, <laughs> do you see this? And are women better placed in the newly emerging world than they were before? Oh, they absolutely are, because I think this is we're going to lead the charge in this. Feminine energy is um, somewhat an unknown factor to men. A lot of men are tapping into the, their, their own feminine energy because we, you know, men and women, we have both energies in us. Obviously, women have more feminine energy. Men have more um, male energy. Typically, I'm not saying everyone. Yeah. Um, but we have both of them in there. And so women, this is how we naturally show up in feminine energy, which is more about serving and leading from a perspective of lifting up rather than leading from a perspective of look at me, which is not leadership. So this is why we're seeing the the male energy that that framework, that platform is not working anymore moving forward. We are awakening to an, what life is really about and how we want to operate and navigate life. This is what this emergence into more of a female energy um, framework is. That's why this is happening. So it's more, I, I look at it as more as wisdom and sageness. Does that make sense? Um <laughs> yes, uh, but you know that you could mean a lot behind those words. I, I I hear what you're saying, and I and I fully agree with it. Like women, an, an easy distinction is um, you know we all have male and female energy, but uh, women exactly are more generally in touch with female energy, and you know for by a factor of four to one uh, at least or more, you know so women generally are, and uh, they they. Um, they're better at listening. They're better at certain things. And like even taking listening, they also listen with compassion, which is also female energy. Um, they don't immediately feel the need to solve what you're complaining about like a man would, for instance. You right. know? So there, <laughs> there is a different um, relationship immediately uh, when you're using female energy. And uh, then when you're like that, it's going to be very hard for you to have that energy and then climb into an ivory tower because you'd lose the connection that, that makes it work. Um, and I think that's really a lot of the problem with things that are that are around now is there's a massive disconnect um, between services being offered by institutions and what people really want. Whereas, um, you know, and, and that was going to be one of my questions. The fact that a, uh, a woman wants to stay more connected, is that going to make it much harder for a woman to get to the point, for instance, where she's raking in money because she wouldn't be happy with that disconnect? Uh, okay, I don't quite know exactly what you're asking there could you could you ask, ask well, that again well it's Michael? like if you, if you want to stay connected to somebody and you're you're talking to them and listening and tailoring what you're saying uh, and how you're helping them that that isn't you can't uh, boil or template that yeah. pattern you can't mass produce it yeah yeah 
No, not on the individual level, but I think that there is a great opportunity to create leverage where you can um, duplicate that experience or as near that experience as you can. Is that what you were asking? Yeah, Michael? yeah. yeah. Um, but like I, I know working in the spiritual field, there's four men to every four women to every man in it. Uh, that's my own statistic. I don't know what the actual statistics are. <laughs> it's probably probably. But I, I ran a I ran a center and and almost everybody in it were were female. And yet, w- if you were to read magazines and or look at newspapers or look at books, most books are written by uh, and most TV shows are going to be by men. And I I find it it's it's lopsided considering that there are so many in women in the field. And I, I wonder what holds what keeps women back? I mean, apart from the obvious society things, um, like I think, well, I don't know. Question is to you: Do you know what holds people back? Is it strategy? Is it missing a strategy? No, I think uh, because those are all the tactical things you can do. Th- those are the doing things. When it comes to strategy, that's all about a doing thing. I think it starts before that, Michael, and we touched on it already. Is that women are afraid of their own power? Right. They're afraid of what that means for them. And here's here's something that I hear a lot that I find so very curious is if I step into who I am and, and this dream of what I have to create in, in life and my business, what am I going to have to leave behind? And the number one thing women are afraid of is what will happen with their intimate relationship. If I become this woman that I know I am inside and and I step into my power, will I lose my intimate relationship? Yeah, and, and it's crazy to think about because, well, if you do, it's because you need to evolve past what that relationship will allow you to grow into. And that's very scary. Or you actually may find that it really enhances your relationship as you step into your own power. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tell my partner all the time, I'm quite happy to sit in the couch and, and uh, for it to be the <laughs> bedroom. <laughs> but but no, I and that's that's terrible, and that's something that needs to be fixed. And it's I think it's worse here here than it, it would be in Ireland where we grew up. But even in Ireland, where it's illegal, for inststance, for an employer to ask how how are you going to who's going to watch your kids while you're working mm-hmm. here, women are only women are asked that question. Uh, yes, and even though it takes a couple to have a child. Have you ever been asked that question, Heidi? Uh, yes, even <laughs> yeah. here in the States and every job in Ireland, every job. <laughs> is, is it illegal to ask that question here, though? Yes. Oh, okay. There you go. Well, in Washington, anyway. I, I, well, it's interesting, Heidi, that you're asked that question because I've never been asked that question. I don't They're know. They're afraid what, of your feminine power. <laughs> I, maybe. <laughs> One of the job interviews I had, I was asked, I was actually pregnant at the time. <laughs> well. And they, and they, they, I didn't look pregnant, though. And they asked me if I had any plans on getting pregnant. And I said, I was able to answer confidently no, because I was already <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> See, and I have a physical reaction to that question. Like, why would you be asking me that? How does that impact my work? Does it involve a yeah. fist? And yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's uh, correct. Um, you, you've got um, an excellent series of podcasts to and I love how you extract the highlights from each so the listener can quickly browse to what they want to hear. It's a goldmine, really, the, the whole set that you have there. Can you tell people a little bit about what you've got? Uh, on the podcast, yeah, it's really geared towards women in the very early stages of their business the first few years because I think this is where our biggest learning curve is. So talking about not only the specific areas of your business that you want to grow if you want to learn about social social media or um, strategy, any kind of strategy that you have or putting together your offers. We bring on other experts who are obviously experts in their field to talk about how to do that simply. I, here's the theme again, simplicity, how to do this simply and really discerning whether or not that's a strategy you want to employ. And we've just uh, started opening up a, a couple different series within the podcast. One is very specifically me sharing my expertise and point of view because I do have opinions, very strong ones, <laughs> about what it takes to grow a business and where we stop ourselves as women. So we've started a new series within the podcast on that and one that you actually were the uh, first one in the new series of Outspoken and that is really getting down into the very strong opinions of the experts that we want to interview on the on the show. Yeah, Um I, yeah, I was just uh, how can people get in touch with you? I mean, it's the podcast series is huge on its own, especially with the way you've got it laid out. You don't have to listen to everything to, to find the, the nuggets that you want to uh, get help with. 
Um, but how else can people get in touch with you and find out what, um, what you do? Well, th- my website is at MickeyStrong.com. And the unemployable woman.com is where you'll find the podcast and uh, the magazine because we do uh, publish a periodic mag- digital magazine as well. Okay, and I've got links to those on our Facebook page already. So anybody wanting to, to get them can get it from that. Uh, well, thank you very much for uh, talking to us today, Mickey. It was uh, quite enjoyable. And uh, we might have you back in, in, uh, in the future sometime. That would be lovely. Thank you, Michael. Thank okay. you, Heidi. Thank you. Thanks, Mickey. We're, we're going to take another break. Um, back in a moment, you're listening to So You Think You're Awake. I'm Susan Pullen with True Radiance Healing Arts. When you remove the old beliefs that keep you living the same patterns over and over in your career, relationships, or health, then your life begins to flow. It's as though you're in a boat and in place of the waves that used to upset or rock your boat, you now have smooth open water with the current carrying you where you want to go. It is my great pleasure to work with your guides and angels to teach you to clear old beliefs and conditioning, including cutting the ties, so you can have greater freedom and ease in your life. Work with me in person or over the phone. Call me today at 206 818 Four six eight zero, or find me on the web at true-radiance.com. Hello, this is Heidi. How can I help you? You tell me. You're the psychic. That's not how it works. I am a medium. I connect to your spirit guides and loved ones and pass on their messages to you. So why did I call? Use the force, Heidi. Look, I can get answers to any questions you ask. That's not a problem. They can be about anything. Relationships, career, children, finances, anything. Anything? Okay. What's my favorite color? Dave, your mom says you're being childish. For readings with Heidi, go to angelsontheline.com. Get your smile on with Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to So You Think You're Awake with Michael Sheridan, Susan Pullen and Heidi Brooke. This show is all about dreams and their meanings. What have you got next for us, Susan? Whatever you have there. It's called My Soul. I dreamed God was cleansing my soul. He was pouring water over me again and again. What could this mean? Okay, very, very short and simple. Water in dreams represents life, whether it's rain, uh, the sea, the lake. I mean, life came from the sea. um, So this is why it means that. So it's saying that life itself is is about um, purging your soul and not in a religious context but in bringing awareness to you and eliminating the things that hold you back so the events in life rather than looking at life and saying life is in the way of me praising God for instance it's life as it allows you to get in touch with who you are discover your limitations deal with your limitations by the very fact that you have to deal with them and then um, uh, once you've dealt with those you become uh, more in touch with who you are uh, and that's that's really what it is. But I mean, it's it's the blueprint uh, for for life. Really, it's it's a nice dream. So we have another short one from the same dreamer. Uh, I dreamed I was having a nosebleed, but instead of blood coming from my nose, it was mustard. It okay. just gushed out of my nose until I woke up. Okay, so um, the color yellow color of mustard is about irrational fears. So this dream is saying that uh, the dreamer wants to suppress, doesn't want her irrational fears to be obvious to people. Um, you got something on this earlier, Heidi. Um, I was getting that this dreamer has a fear of bringing up repressed, it was either repressed incidents or repressed feelings, obviously that would go with the incident, but, um, but also that there's a danger of an aneurysm if she doesn't start processing her feelings. Okay, and that, how can that happen? So feelings are really important. We always see in dreams, um, they always link um, the suppression of feelings years and years and years in advance to um, any physical conditions that would you know, happen with the circulatory system. So there is dire- direct connection. The heart chakra is what uh, we need to have it open and balanced. So we need things come we need to express our feelings share them and we need to allow others to share their feelings so we need this two-way flow of energy with the heart chakra and with that two-way flow of energy um our heart stays healthy and balanced without it um we can see the imbalance 
uh, start showing up on the physical side, which we don't want, and so an aneurysm would be a, a physical imbalance to do with uh, the, the heart chakra, ultimately the heart chakra. I think a positive thing about uh, this dreamer is that she knows what the, the incidents are that she okay. needs to go in and deal with. Yeah, of course, yes, yeah, you, she would, she would. And we, we, you know, when it comes to fears like that, we always know what our fears are because <laughs> if we didn't know what they were, we, we wouldn't be afraid of the yeah. pulling up. So uh, it, clearly this is not a, a stab in the dark, what do I need to do? You know you need to look at these things and or maybe it's one thing yeah. and, uh, and, and then the problem goes away. So heart issues like this show up up to 20 years in advance before you ever have a physical condition. So in general, you have a very, very long time to deal with it. Um, so, so don't be worried about health or anything like that. So you had a, another dream there you were going to share? Yes. Um, this is my dream. I just share that with people. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to keep Full that piece quiet. <laughs> no, because I think it's important to, to note, you know, that we're all working on ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is part of the process. So anyway, so it starts off, and this was last night, mind you. I was eating McDon- McDonald's with my uncle, whom I'm very close to. He peeled off a sticker on one of the Big Mac boxes and won with the mystery prize and said I could have it. I went to the counter to redeem my prize and found out I had won $300,000. I had to read from a list that had five sections on it. The employees were po- pointing to the p- sections that they wanted me to read aloud. Number three was Gamma Major, Gemma Minor. Number five was Zena Major, Zana Minor. There seemed to be a lot of paperwork involved in claiming the prize. I also had to verbally repeat I had lockjaw after the employee said it looks like you have won. It seems like such a crazy dream. <laughs> <clears throat> and of course, the very first um, question you would ask is, do you have uh, digestive system problems because of <laughs> McDonald's? Yes. And despite what you might think about McDonald's, in dreams, McDonald's and Burger King and fast food places like that um, are generally good, especially if in the dream they're very highly illuminated. And they usually are. They're usually very bright lights in the dreams, even if you're going through the drive through Oh, in the dream it was very, very white and yeah. lots of light. <laughs> so, um, and so that's always a distinction you see in dreams. And it's because it, it's the fast food is to speed up the slow and sluggish food that's in your body. It's the antidote. So it, it's your body trying to speed up the f- or showing you that you need to speed up the, uh, your elimination system. Uh, and then winning the prize, okay, now we're getting to the, the crux of this. So the 300,000, that's a lot of energy. So the amount of money you win in a dream or, or spend on things is about the investment that you're willing to put into something. But here you're getting it. So it's showing to you a return on investment for something that you're doing. And what are you doing? Um, you, you have to repeat uh, phrases that the employee gives to you. And this is about channeling. I mean, because that's what you do. With your channeling, you are told what to say and then you say it. And... Um, if the subtle differences, like if you if you read out again the, the two phrases, what are they? Gamma major, gemma minor, xena uh, major, xana minor. It, it sounds like a, a, a voice exercise. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it is indeed, it's a voice exercise. And do you want to share the t- how your channeling has changed lately? I mean, what you're you're exploring now? Um, I'm exploring trans channeling, where which is literally when you have another soul or being or entity talk through you. And the... I've only done it so far with family members and there's a bit of conf- for me when they're talking through me and they refer to me myself as Heidi <laughs> and the family <laughs> members and I, I kind of get taken back a little bit and I feel like I should translate and that's what I So this I'm is about you not in. translating it's, yeah. a, it's like there's, there's only subtle differences in those words and it's they want you to, to say exactly as it is, as it is and, and include the subtleties where, which is, is significant so trans channeling is not too common that's like what you, Hollywood um, typifies, like with the movie Ghost, for instance, where um, Patrick Squeezy goes into Whoopi Goldberg and tells, you know, takes over her body. Of course, that takeover part doesn't really happen. But, um, but they do manipulate the vocal cords. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's up to the, the channel to relinquish as much energy as they want. And that's what I was struggling with. It was because I, I knew I could move myself out a little bit and let them in more. And I was like, oh, it was, <laughs> it's just unknown water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And and it's um so it's really good. So it's saying by doing that you'll you'll reap huge dividends because of the amount of money that you're winning. And the last little piece is paperwork to be done. So that's just saying that there's still there's still more to get into this point. Yeah. You know, you've won it, but you still have to complete something. So and, so that, and the lock jaw, I think. Yeah, yeah. That so was perfect. Again, Once you pointed out what that meant. <laughs> so the lock jaw is about you know, say what you're saying. Don't listen. Don't be listening to what they're saying and then 
repeating it later. It's it's almost like say it at the same time they're saying it. Yeah. Um, and and of course it's kind of interesting then because then you don't know what you're going to be telling people. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I won't get slapped or anything. <laughs> what did I just say? <laughs> no, that's unlike. No, I'm just joking. So um, uh, we're coming near the end. What have we got left? Uh, we've, so you, Susan has a nice little short one there. So this is from a listener. It's called How to Do Heroin. <laughs> Walking into a restaurant and my partner was coaching me on how to properly do heroin there. He said to do it slowly but get enough that it does more, uh, does more than make you see permanent lucky stars. Somehow the serial Lucky Charms was involved in the conversation. This is the second night this week that a dream has mentioned cereal. Okay, so um, this is about uh, her being the heroine in public eyes. You know, it's kind of a, it's a, a pun. pun. Um, but it's also about her channeling and getting into altered states. Well, that's, I already know with this dreamer, that's what she does because we've, we've talked about it. And we've also, I've asked her after this dream if her husband supported her getting further into this field because she's quite interested in, in um, channeling and and dream interpretation and things in the spiritual field. Um, but particularly her dreams are, are telling her to channel because apparently she's been channeling forever. She never stopped. Most of us stop at some point and take it back up, but she's never stopped. Um, but he kind of like, does a, he sees it as fake, but thinks it's okay if she was to run it as, as a business. And that's how he would say it to her too. But we see that, we see that here. Um, he thinks it's actually childish or a joke, which is what the Lucky Charms is all about. And, um, that he's afraid uh, that she, well, let's see that he is afraid she'll be perceived as trying to claim something that's not real uh, when it actually is, and it's also I think a sideways sl- swipe at me with the leprechauns and the lucky charms being, uh, <laughs> or maybe it's you, it's you they're attacking. No, oh, I was I was born here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, any other news? Um, I have a course on March fifth and sixth. Have you anything coming up? Uh, I do. I have a course coming up in January. Um, more to come about that. <laughs> you say that every time. <laughs> I only said it one time before. <laughs> well, that's enough. Okay. <laughs> so uh, th- thanks to everybody for listening. Uh, remember, you can get our contact details and archives of all our previous show on dream-analysis.com. Thanks to our producer and engineer, Eric Ryder. Thanks to Susan Pullen. Thanks to Heidi Brook. And until next week, we'll leave you with this quote. Problems are not stop signs, they're guidelines. Thank you. Thanks.